Today we talk about the two most powerful elements for those of us who were born with a uterus. But before we begin, please make sure to subscribe and to hit the bell so that you can be alerted of our episodes as they come out. They usually come out every Thursday, but sometimes we do bonuses. So please like, please subscribe, and please share. Back to it. The two most important elements for those of us born with a uterus are earth and water. Earth and water. How do I know that? Well, as the period empress, my life is devoted to finding the easiest way to end period problems for anybody who's suffering and to make steady the turbulence of perimenopause and to make joyful the experience of menopause. To that end, I am not looking at what we can do because as people born with a uterus, as feminine energy biased beings, we have innate strengths that begin with our willingness to be. And in alignment with that, we look at how we can accommodate our being rather than our doing. And so by default, our elements are going to be earth and water because they are the elements that be. If all of this sounds like gibberish and you're like, how can you end period problems through being? We have a special gift for you. We wrote a white paper on this. We wrote a white paper on the science behind why we need to be our distinct selves and rely and lean into our distinct power to be powerfully instead of doing, because the doing and getting energy from that, that is our friends, that is for our friends who were not born with a uterus. But we have such power in doing, excuse me, in being, and we want to use it. We will flex so much more powerfully if we start working with what we've got, instead of keeping pretending that we have something that we don't have, or that they, or pretending that we have That something that we have or at some point in our lives had is something that they've ever had. They never had it. They operate operate on a completely different biological schedule and they made a life that they called normal based on that hormonal schedule. We have a different one. And so it is up to us to create our normal. And one of the things that we can do to help give ourselves the nourishment, and I mean holistically, that will then result in the end of period problems, and this is a highly contributing factor, is to lean in and power ourselves up from the things that we already know nourish us. Our power elements are earth and water. Their power elements are sun, also known as heat or fire, and wind, also known as air. Notice that air and fire are things that only exist when they do. Earth is earth. It doesn't matter how it shows up. Earth is earth. We never ask, is it earthy today? No. Is it windy? Is it sunny? Absolutely. But not is it earthy. Is it watery today? We could ask if there's rain, but we never question whether or not it is present. This same power of presence by default, without effort, is ours and can be used and leveraged by us for our greatest good, for our easeful impact on a regular basis. And so how can we use it? I'm gonna give you a few examples, especially for those of us who want to switch to pain-free and PMS-free periods, or we want to reverse the symptoms of diagnoses like endometriosis, PCOS, PMDD, or fibroids. We no longer have to look to relieve those symptoms. My title, my mode of work is as the period empress because I am inviting you to a new country, a new world of solution where we do not have to sacrifice to heal because all we're doing is coming home to the truth of us, to the truth of our innate strengths. So 
let's talk about the first scenario where knowing that our elements, water and earth, becomes very useful. I was in a training program when I was getting my ICF certification, International Coaching Federation certification. And the last training with 13 souls and two leaders all day long happened on the first day of my priestess phase. I use embodied names for phases. So this is what, what, what we might know as menstrual phase, the beginning of the menstrual shedding, exunt, exit. This is a time where we should not be around others. But I, in contrast to how my life usually works out, where my body kind of knows what's coming up, and so it will delay or shorten protract or contract my cycle by a day or two so that I don't have to be in a situation that might compromise my body's physiological needs in a given phase for that phase and especially with priestess phase. Multiple times if I've suddenly had to travel or I've suddenly had a schedule change for something that was very strenuous, it has been delayed or the cycle has been shortened so that I could show up in the phase that allowed me to have a lot of energy so that I wouldn't have to compromise the three-day restorative that is so special for priestess phase. But on this day, I didn't have a choice. So what I did was I, I clothed myself in clothes that were calming, in fabrics, in linens that were soft, in color schemes that were calming, like white, tan, or all black. Things that used the least amount of effort for understanding. I made sure that the entire time that I was in the experience, I had a plant close by me. I was always in contact with earth. For that reason, it had a grounding effect for me, a soothing effect. I had lots and lots of water around me. I had candles floating in water that were unlit. I held water and I drank water often so that I could give myself as much of the experience that comes with priestess phase while still being able to be present for the experience. I did not participate in the way that the group was accustomed to. When I did speak, I spoke very profoundly and I knew it would be a challenge because this is a time when the mental is least active. And so I knew that and I kept my feedback limited. I did not try to be what I was not. And ultimately we all had a wonderful final day. But the knowledge that I had curated for myself cues to remind me, stay where you are. You're going to be okay. You're going to get through this and you can rest after. That made a huge difference. Is this resonating for you? Do you remember times when just the simple act of bringing earth or water close to you had an effect? Conversely, is your life moving so fast that you don't really have time to notice these things? It's a very interesting aspect as somebody who lives in radical cycle syncing through the fierce gentleness framework, which is the framework that we use in our foundational breakthrough course, ending menstrual suffering in 10 minutes a day. And that result of radical cycle syncing is that my life moves 10 times faster. I get things done, things land in my life more quickly, and it's not because I work harder or faster. It's because I use each phase for what it offers. And in doing that, I allow space for co-creation with life. I trust that things are happening at the right time, even when I think I'm inconvenienced. The second scenario is one that I continue to practice. There was a problem with my dog. He was um, skittish very anxious, very nervous, and 
of course, when something's going wrong with your dog, the first reaction is it's the owner. So you have to take care of yourself because your dog or your pet, whatever the pet may be, is dealing with something, is, is reflecting for you if you have a close relationship with them. I have a very close relationship with my dog, as in like, we don't even, like we travel together. I don't go if dogs aren't allowed. It's like that. Um, and so I knew that his unrest was my unrest. And when I did some introspection, a very basic meditation in quiet, what landed for me was that I was not in touch with earth. When we're out of our depth, think of when you're, if you've ever been pulled out by a, by a tide, by a riptide, I have, it's terrifying to be out of your depth, to not know where the ground is and you panic. And so my reaction was bring the ground to myself. And so that's what we did. We started going outside once a day and grounding, different from a walk, from his fitness walks, different from getting something done. The purpose of the action was to ground, go outside, take my shoes off, take my socks off, get my feet on the ground. If it's too cold for that, wear a full winter coat, but lay myself on the ground. And my dog was all for it and has been ever since. We go out every day now and he leads us to an area, to a field, he leads us and he sits down and completely lounges. And I sit down and I take the you know prone position and just let all of me be in contact with the earth. It has made a huge difference. There is a movie about it, it's called Grounding. It's interesting, I didn't get a lot out of it. I watched it on like triple speed or something um, to see what I needed to get, but what I just told you is it. Ground, you should do it, it's helpful. It's, it's a game changer, do it, so simple. Especially if you are a person who was born with a uterus. So those are my two examples. I would love to find out if you're up for it, how experimenting with making water more of a conscious part of your life, making earth more of a conscious part of your life, how that might be making your life better. I'm very interested and can't wait to read your comments. Wishing you joy, ease, space, and grace. I'll see you soon.